Good evening, everyone. We're going to wait just a minute or so uh, to get started as people are jumping in here. We're up to about 36 people. If you want to make sure to mute yourself as you are entering, it should be muted, but make sure you stay muted throughout. That would be great. No, then I won't be able to hear. I think. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the registration meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't turn on my camera. Um, I haven't done Zoom in a while here. Um, this is the registration presentation for the class of 2026. So ninth graders that will be going into 10th grade. So getting ready for the 23-24 school year, um, which seems crazy. We're already halfway through uh, the first, uh, halfway through the year for the 22-23 year. Um, I see Alyssa Gardner, one of our assistant principals, who is here with me and looks like a fun friend um, <laughs> to do a little greeting. So I'm going to let her take it away. <laughs> Hi, sorry everybody, this was falling right at nighttime bottle time, so trying to multitask here, but this is my my 10-month-old son um, joining us as well. <clears throat> but I'm Alyssa Gardner, I am um, an assistant principal at St. Louis Park, this is my first year with the district, and um, I work specifically with the 9th and 11th grade classes, and um, the plan is for me to follow this 9th grade cohort on to 10th grade next year, and so um, I wanted to be here to welcome everybody. Um, our principal also, as you probably know, is Miss Lanisha Paddock, and then we also have um, an in assistant principal, uh, Mr. Wennerberg, who works with grades 10 and 12. Um, so we just really want to thank you for being in a, a supportive community um, as we look ahead to registration for next year. These are really important conversations that we're having with students, and we just want to give you all the information that you need um, to be able to talk to your students as well about what decisions they make. Um, there's a lot of choices that they get to make, and so... Um, I think just really trying to identify some of their areas of interest at this age, a lot of students really just want to take what their friends are taking, but then they find out they don't really like the class. Um, so I think it's I think it's important that we just really find some subject areas that students enjoy um, and can connect to. And often those are the teachers that they end up really connecting the most strongly with as well. So, um, you know, Ms. Nelson's going to go through a lot of oh, options yeah. and just really we want you to be aware of them and to be able to have conversations with your students. Um, we also have a lot of extracurricular activities and, um, coming into ninth grade, I think it can be a really overwhelming year for a lot of students. And so now that hopefully a lot of them are kind of settled and getting into a routine for high school, we can also start having those conversations about different, um, clubs and activities and sports for them to get connected to our spring sports will be starting here already in March. Um, that's coming up really fast. 
So um, just, um, again, important conversations for us to be having. We're having them at school, but the more that we can all have them together um, and, of course, reaching out to us with any questions, um, we want the next three years, three and a half years uh, to really be the best possible. Um, and also just um, as we're going through this presentation, tonight is really meant to be a presentation. So um, Ms. Nelson has it set up where you can send her questions and counselors will be taking everything in and creating um, sort of an FAQ document and continuing to update our website to clarify information. If you have any questions that are specific to your student or your individual um, student's choices, please reach out to um, the appropriate person individually. So whether that's Ms. Nelson as the counselor, uh, Ms. Marley Nierenstein as the social worker, myself as the assistant principal, um, so that we can get you the, the best information um, and work on the best plan possible for your child. Um, Ms. Nelson's just gonna, she's gonna go through all of the opportunities we have, all of our registration resources. Um, we are just beginning this process at school with students. So we thought it was a critical time to host these parent nights um, so that, Again, you can be asking their students what they're learning about the classes, what's interesting to them, um, and help them make some choices for their next three years. And um, again, welcome everybody. And I am going to turn it back over to Ms. Nelson. Great, thank you, Alyssa. Um, I am just looking because someone was asking, Alyssa, if you wanna peek, I don't have the letter and I'd have to jump out of the presentation when the 10th grade meeting is, the 10th to 11th, it's on the website. Um, and Maybe you can post the link and I'll try to copy that there. So, so we get people to the right place. <laughs> yep, the 10th to 11th grade meeting tonight. Yes, yeah, because okay. there was a little overlap between them. So I'm not sure the timing of, I think Heidi started hers. Yep, it's at, uh, it is at seven. So it'll be starting here in about 25 minutes. Oh, perfect. So if you go on the website, I think that one is at seven and you'd be able to catch it. So um, yeah, so um, hi, everyone. I'm Barb Nelson, the ninth grade counselor. Um, if you have been here uh, in the district and we had an eighth grade student and are coming back again, you kind of get double duty with me because I do the eighth to ninth um, grade uh, uh, kind of transition and then also ninth to 10th. And so um, here you are again, you made it through kind of registering for high school the initial time. And now you're kind of looking at, um, you know, going forward into 10th grade and 10th, 11th, 12th as you go through. And what we are hoping to do, um, you know, you're really students are just going to be making choices for next year, the 23-24 school year, but we have had the opportunity to work in our Naviant student program. And we're hoping that we can get it all cleared up so students can actually input their choices and kind of work through creating a three-year plan. Again, just a plan, and I'll show you some screenshots later of what that looks like, but it's a way for them to kind of plot out what courses they're gonna take over the course of the next three years, which um, for some kids I think can be really helpful to just kind of think about kind of long-term. So. Um, again, questions at any time, feel free to reach out. Um, we had some, I just did the eighth to ninth grade. And even from that, we're, there'll be some questions that go in that frequently asked questions that will create a tab on the, um, on the website to have a kind of live document where we can keep updating things there. So it's exciting to be with you here and um, we'll get started. So just, you know, kind of a recap, and it, it, we realize it's a short turnaround time, especially for the, um, you know, the 9th and 10th and 11th, but we are in a situation where we have snow days this week, and then there's, um, we had one long week and then a short week with President's Day, so we were trying to fit things in. I actually, on Monday, got, um, hopefully your students have seen a copy of the registration planner. It would have been green in color that maybe they brought home to you. Um, so I got those to English teachers because we're going to be working through the English teachers to help students actually do their registration. So we have this evening sessions for families, uh, parents, guardians, caregivers to, to hear about. We'll post it on the website. So if you have a neighbor that didn't make it, they'll be able to see it. Or maybe you want to go back and revisit something if your student's not on with you tonight. And either um, yesterday or tomorrow um, in their social studies classes, we do kind of an elective fair. Um, because we know that kids aren't going to just go read the course book, right? We would encourage them to do that. But this way we get live teachers. And actually, I sat in on one of them and um, 
some of the business ed teachers had a student come and talk about their experience in their classes. So um, it was really nice to have that. Um, I know our art uh, tech department had kind of pictures about, you know, kind of the different art classes that they do. So hopefully your students, um, if they didn't see that, they'll have that tomorrow and they get a chance to think about and hear about the different electives, all the great classes at the high school, because coming in as a ninth grader, there's a lot less choices. Um, but in 10th grade, and then 11th and 12th grade, there's a lot more options. And then next week, like I said, it's a short turnaround time, but we're going to leave it open. So if students need to go back in and make changes, they can. I'm going to really encourage students when I'm with them in the classroom that they have to put something in, and then we'll be able to go back and change it. But I'll come in. Um, I already sent a little short uh, snippet uh, video to the English teachers to play just kind of an overview of graduation requirements so we don't have to spend too much time on that in the classroom, but we'll go through with them and kind of cover class options, talk about things like a I. IB, AP, PSEO, um, we're going to cover those later on, um, but just and answer their questions and really help them input their courses because that's what this is all about getting them set up for success for next year. Um, so if you haven't done so yet, the high school website has been updated. I really encourage you to take a look on there. The course catalog has all been updated, um, you know, got some, you know, changes, updates, things like that. Of course, level, grade levels, things are open to. And then we also updated the tabs and the information night sessions will be posted there. And then you can see the registration planner worksheets listed there too. If you have not um, seen one of those, it didn't make it home in a backpack or folder or whatever um, they do. There are some copies online and it's actually really nice. I was telling freshman or eighth grade families, you know, they only have certain choices, but you can look at the 11th and 12th grade sheets to see what else is there and available for you, uh, for your students to take in the upper grade levels. So just a review, because you've probably um, heard this before, uh, the graduation requirements. So we require 46 semester credits to graduate and students earn one credit per class per semester. So typically students earn 12 to 14 classes per year. And even if students took a, a you know, took six classes in a study hall every semester, so they had 12 credits a year, they would end up with 48, which is two more than they need to graduate. So they can have a study hall every semester if they wanted, but they also can, um, take a full load of classes now going into this next year. I know there were a lot of freshmen that ended up having one or even two study halls in some cases. Um, and I had a, a number of students ask about doing an online elective um, you know, class because they had a study hall. So there's lots of different options out there for things like that. But they can register for a full load of classes with all the different electives. But just to review graduation requirements quickly, um, you know, four years of English and social studies is what's required. And there are kind of prescribed pathways in each of those um, requirements that the state of Minnesota says we need to offer to hit standards in those areas. In math and science, it's uh, six credits or three years, and there's specific classes or courses that students need to have met. So three years through advanced algebra or the equivalent, and then one year of biology, one year of chemistry or physics, or one year of an elective science, which typically for most students is their ninth grade science. The way we did that this year, and it, you can kind of see it was still called Science 9 in the book if you look at that, but it was a semester of life science and a semester of physical science, really meant to introduce kids to both of them, and then they'll go on and can take the year-long courses of those um, as they choose. And you can see there's actually a double asterisk following those. Um, we were looking at um, in our course offerings, what are some elective courses that would count to meet the math and science requirements? So you'll see throughout the book, there are a couple classes that again, if, if like, let's say your student is in geometry as a ninth grader and then advanced algebra, if they've met that advanced algebra requirement, maybe they're gonna do computer science for their third year of math. The caution with that is you really need to be aware of if you're looking to go to a four-year college post high school that they are gonna to wanna to see more of a traditional math sequence. Um, obviously the computer science isn't a bad course, but it's just that they wanna see more traditional math. So just be aware of that as you're picking courses there. Um, 
Health is something we did make a little change. It used to be, well, for some of you, if you had older students, you may remember we had an embedded health. Um, we went away from that and now offer a one semester class, but students don't necessarily have to take it in 10th grade. They can take that in grades 10, 11, or 12. So it can be spread out in one of those semesters. And then um, this year they should be completing their FIAD requirement. We did change that to ninth or 10th grade, but they have one semester of FIAD that for your students was taken in first or second semester. And then fine arts, two credits of that, um, you know, things like band, orchestra, choir, all the other art sequencing of courses, intro to art, multi, um, uh, the photography, graphic design, painting, drawing, there's lots of different courses there, theater arts. Um, so your students just need to make sure in grades nine through 12, they complete two credits of fine arts. Uh, students have a ninth grade required course, the information communication literacy course. Um, again, first or second semester, they've had that. And you'll see that Park Connections is listed there. So one credit over four years. So it's 0.25 of a credit per year to give them one credit by the time they um, graduate. And then the balance of credits or classes is their electives. And that's where they can kind of pick and choose. And there's lots of different opportunities. Um, you can tell, you know, if a student went through and took a world language for four years, that's eight credits. So that's a bulk of those elective credits they would need. Um, world language, just to clarify, is not required for um, uh, graduation from St. Louis Park High School. It's more about what students are doing post high school that to go into a, a four year college, typically, typically you need two to three years or levels of a single second language. Um, and so making sure that, um, you know, students meet that requirement or exceed it if that's something they're interested in doing and kind of want to keep that option open. One of the things that we um, think people find really helpful and we've had the departments really work on these is these content area pathways. And I actually this year took screenshots from each of them and sorry, the science one we I realized had the still had 22, 23, but that is the updated one in the course book. So it's kind of looking at in each grade level. And now that you've gone, through, your students have kind of, you know, partway through ninth grade, you can kind of envision like, okay, this is kind of maybe where they're at and what they should take as 10th, 11th, or 12th graders. If there's questions on that in these four content areas, the teachers, their current teachers, um, went through a slide deck to really help prepare them for this registration process. So those um, slides can be seen, you know, they, I think the teachers probably posted them on Schoology and we were going to be able to load them in on the website as well. But it's helpful just to be able to look through this, kind of do some planning and be able to think about what students want to do as they go into the upper grade levels. Um, sometimes I know there were um, you know, people who are asking about post-secondary education options, which we'll talk about a little bit later, like what's the best plan to do? And there's really nothing you need to worry about planning for if you're going to do that in 11th or 12th grade, because as long as you're going along and meeting your requirements, you're going to be able to be just fine um, going um, on to do PSEO because the you'll meet your graduation requirements, your high school courses, as well as get college credits by doing that. Um, there's another way to look at um, elective options, uh, course options by pathway here, and we, you probably saw this last year, it's something we've updated with any new courses, um, CNA, the Certified Nursing Assistant is a relatively new course, and students have the option to get a certification after one semester of a course, which is great for them to be able to do that, and you can see there's articulated college credits as well as concurrent college credits available through these uh, different courses. And so that just means they have the potential to earn some college credit. And this is really about helping students hopefully identify areas or paths that they might be interested in after high school, um, or maybe not. Maybe they take a course and find out like, oh, I thought I really liked accounting, but that's not for me. So I, I kind of look at it both of those ways. So I think it's good to encourage students to broaden their horizons. They're hopefully past the point of wanting to take just what their friends are taking, although that still obviously happens. And it's really fun when they get classes with their friends. That's not what it's all about. It's really thinking about what are you interested in after high school and where are you kind of um, thinking some of your interests may lie and maybe exploring some of those as well. This uh, chart also has the little orange dots are the um, classes that meet the fine arts requirement too. 
And then this is a tool that's online and it kind of mimics what we're trying to do with the um, Naviance course planner. And it's just the paper pencil version, right? So you could kind of plot out based on this and then that would help the kids actually input what they need, um, you know, or what they need to want to put into Naviance. And I'll again, show you those screenshots, but know that this is available on the website. It's a helpful tool for planning. And especially if someone's interested in, um, like maybe perhaps the IB diploma or taking some level of IB courses as they go through the International Baccalaureate. Uh, Faduma Adid is our new enrichment coordinator. I think I actually have her on a slide later on, but she'll be hosting some of those sessions for students um, to be able to, um, you know, there isn't going from ninth to 10th grade. It's not that big jump that you have to specifically do some things, but definitely from 10th to 11th, if you're thinking of IB diploma, there are certain things that you want to make sure you have, you are set up to take. The biggest thing going from ninth to 10th grade is most likely uh, making sure students are taking that IB chemistry class that starts as uh, 10th grade. This is the registration planner worksheet. So this year it's a two-sided sheet for students. And so they have the option to go through, if you remember, when you see the two boxes, S1 and S2, it's a full semester, or excuse me, a full year course, both semesters that students take. And then anytime it's a single box, it's a one semester requirement that students take either first or second semester. Um, they have also the option to put their alternate course selections in there, and that is helpful for us as far as planning. Um, and when we get back in the fall, this counselors really uh, work to make sure students have set schedules. And if there's something that's full or in conflict, then we're able to go in and look for alternates um, that might fit in their schedule. So students can kind of use this as the guide because this will very much mimic kind of how they input their courses online. And then this is what in the past it has looked like for PowerSchool. So we use this registration system um, on PowerSchool. Students could click on the little pencil and then it would open up where they could put their choices in. But our hope, like I said, we're still fine tuning the details. This is Naviance Student Course Planner. Um, in ninth grade in our Park Connections classes, students should have logged in, we kind of thought at least twice by this time and maybe more just based on the activities they're doing. Um, and I just asked the English teachers to um, kind of work with their classes to make sure because we can tell by some reports that we can run in Naviance that students haven't logged in. So if your student hasn't logged in or had some trouble logging in, um, please make sure to have them kind of check it out, reset the password. So you can see on here, it kind of goes through a plan of study and we'll help walk them through this if we get to use it. So they have 46 credits. And this is just an example with English where it lays out, um, you click on here to add your courses, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And this is what it actually looks like when students fill that out. When Naviance dumps into PowerSchool, we're just really for your students going to be putting in their 10th grade classes and it continues on down. It's very long, so I couldn't get screenshots of the whole thing, but it has their English, social studies, science, math, and then their elective classes they're able to fill in. So they can really put it all in all the way across. And then I think the plan would be that next year we would just revisit it again to be able to um, put it in or, you know, put their courses in and make any updates we need to. Um, after a certain time, we would likely shut down the ability for kids to chain this, change things on here, but we're going to keep it open. Um, and probably by the end of the month is when we will finalize the, the merge or from the, with the data from Naviance into PowerSchool. So their course requests are recorded in there where the schedule is actually built. So um, again, something we'll work with the students on. I just wanted you to be able to see it so you knew um, kind of what they would be looking at as they inputted their courses. We've really found that it's, you know, one year we tried and it might have been during COVID to have students kind of do it out on their own, but just to have someone there to answer questions and give them some guidance and kind of check it off as they were doing it um, is helpful. And then we can always call students back down or if they, you know, are absent or something, they can pop in and ask questions. We'll have some uh, walk-in days probably following um, that or that last week in uh, February, just if they have quick questions or want to change something and aren't sure about how to do it, we'll have some walk in times available that they can um, meet with us. This is also something, especially now that students are earning credits um, for them to maybe just have on hand and 
you know, keep in a drawer or a file somewhere with all that school stuff you have. I know I have that file tucked away. I, my youngest um, is in eighth grade. So I just went through kind of picking high school courses with him. And it's really helpful. Again, a lot of kids are very visual and kind of knowing like, okay, this is what I have to do. And maybe checking off now that you've finished first semester, what are the courses that you passed? Um, you know, hopefully you've passed all your courses and are able to move forward. Um, we, I will touch base with students on um, if they have not passed all their courses, kind of what the plan would be. Um, at this point, we don't know for summer school next year, uh, kind of dates or times. I've seen a few things kind of that have gone on, but I think it's more about credit recovery in our um, online system. We typically offer an in-person summer school, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like, it's likely that that will happen again. So if students did have um, some struggles with core courses, um, they typically would offer those in summer school. Um, electives are not something, however, that would be in summer school. And typically, if students just miss an elective, they're able to recoup those credits over the um, you know, next several semesters as they go through if they're if they can start to pass all of their classes. So this just helps them kind of track and have a visual of that, um, the requirements. And then this is also just a link and it's on the uh, website. There's college and career information, you know, at your fingertips. And I think a lot of kids think, oh, I don't, there's nothing on there. But really, if you dig in and there's um, several different videos that Ms. Mueller has posted, um, the uh, St. Louis Park Public Schools College and Career Readiness Program, again, is delivered through our um, advisory through Park Connections, but there's a lot of other pieces to things going on. Um, and so you can take a look in there um, on the website to be able to see that. And um, this is where I did post, uh, Faduma is our, she's new this year, our enrichment coordinator. Um, there is a spot on that, the registration website, where it shows all the different kind of things that we term as enrichment. So AP, IB, PSEO, um, online courses, you know, there's lots of different things that kind of fall under that. And so um, you can take a look at those and see what classes specifically fall into those different categories. And uh, Faduma specifically kind of specializes in the, um, the IB courses and kind of working with the IB teachers and th that programming. So she will likely be, if you're someone who might is, might be considering that, that would be a good person to kind of touch base with, um, you know, to or have your student attend one of the meetings that she'll be posting. And then one thing to touch on, because a lot of people are interested in it, but just don't know enough about it or um, kind of want to hear more about the options. So PSEO is thrown around a lot, post-secondary enrollment options. And this is an opportunity to take college courses while still in high school. And several years, years ago now, they opened it up to 10th graders. Um, so going into 10th grade, you have the option to do it as a CTE, career and tech ed student. So your first semester, if you choose to do it in 10th grade, you can only take a, a CTE course. If you do well in that course, and typically there's kind of a grade level requirement, um, if you do well, you would be able to go into the second semester and take a college credit earning course. Um, I probably in the last couple of years have only had a handful, maybe two or three uh, freshmen going into their sophomore year take advantage of this. And so it's not something a lot of 10th graders use. It is becoming more popular, however, because a lot of the classes are online. Um, again, because of COVID, they figured out they can deliver the content that way. And so even in our upper grade levels, I think um, in 11th and 12th grade, we have over 140 students taking either full-time or part-time PSCO. And some of them are at the high school all day because those courses are available online. Um, now, some of them are um, still where you have to go to the campus. So for PSEO as an 11th or 12th grader, that's when most students um, take advantage of it. You need to have your own transportation. So that is a big part of PSEO. Um, uh, I know someone asked in our my earlier session, just when I mentioned PSEO, like, what does it take to get in? Well, all different schools, if you, this is actually a screenshot from the Minnesota Department of Ed, um, and they have a list of all the different colleges. So each college can set their own requirements. So some are going to be more competitive to get in, where some are going to be a little easier, like our um, community and technical colleges versus like Bethel or the U of M. Um, I think the U of M gets a crazy amount of applicants and for PSC only takes a small amount of them. And so it can be competitive depending on where you go. 
Um, but basically with PSEO, it's if you take a four credit college class, for example, it's worth two high school credits. So it's a two to one ratio. And um, so students can very quickly earn the credits they need for graduation and complete college courses at the same time, which is pretty exciting. And for some kids, they like this better than doing the AP or IV options where that college credit is based on a test score and then based on the college's willingness to give you that. You know, if you go to Normandale and you get a credit in their college writing class, that credit you can transfer, you know, to any other college. And so it's just a little different thinking about it. And, and like I said, I think we've seen an increase over the last several years um, of students going into PSCO just because of opportunities and options um, that they, they like to have. Uh, Laura King, who had been one of our full-time counselors, actually is doing kind of a part-time position now around post-secondary enrollment options. She's hosting a meeting next Wednesday, um, if you're interested in that, to hear more about it. And even if you know your student's not going to go next year, but even thinking ahead to maybe when they're a junior or senior, you can certainly pop on that. I'm sure she'll probably record it and post it on the, um, the high school website as well. Um, but students can go in and listen to presentations. She's laid out a schedule here. And then once students have gone to that, if they're interested in applying and kind of just need help with that, she has some help sessions too um, for that, for students to be able to get help with the application. So um, again, something that we're obligated to let families know about, but it's it's something where, you know, it's not huge numbers, but certainly our numbers have gone up over the last several years of people kind of taking advantage of programs like that. Um, we are at about a half hour in, and I do have a couple other slides, but I want to pause here if there's any kind of registration questions. The next set of slides are just, and it, it will be really quick because there's not a lot, but I just wanted to, I know as parents of ninth graders, if this is your first student going through, it can seem kind of overwhelming as far as like, well, what should I be doing? What should I be thinking about? What are things that we need to worry about with high schoolers? So there's just a couple things about testing, but if there's any questions, I know I'm gonna just peek in the chat right now. Um, yes, so we will post this slide deck um, on the website, just the recording of it. Um, actually, we can post the slide deck too if people just want that. Um, and the days that students will register, someone was asking that. So it will be in their English class and the teachers were given a schedule because obviously I can't be in all classes all every day. We kind of have to do a teacher a day and we're also covering our 11th grade um, teachers because the current counselor, uh, her last day is tomorrow. So we're having to cover 11th graders too. So um, the teachers have a schedule and the hope is that when I come in, the students are ready to input their classes. I'll ask them to put something in, but if they need to fine tune it and have a little bit more time, we're not going to close um, either Power School or Naviance like right away. They'll have time to go back in and make some changes or updates. Um, if you have a student that has an individual education plan, an IEP, and they have a case manager, we also work, depending on if they're in a pullout class with our um, language arts teachers, we'll be visiting those classes and helping them as well. But ultimately what happens is they would register as any other student would. And then the case manager kind of does a double check on their course request to make sure that they're in the, the correct courses. Um, a lot of our special ed students might be in a co-taught class. So that kind of happens after after the fact behind the scenes. So that's something we're able to kind of do um, after students put in their initial course requests. Um, and then, um, yes, yeah, so someone had asked um, with the, um, if we get to register in Navian, so they can choose um, alternate electives and they'll probably, we're trying to figure out how many of those they can put in. They can put in up to four um, and so, eventually, you know, basically what a student would do is with their courses that they get, they'll have those in Naviance and then they'll be able to kind of plot out putting their courses in kind of later on if they don't get the ones they want. Um, but they'll have those alternates in there. So in case they don't get it, we'll be doing that on the live side in Power School in August. So hopefully that makes sense. I know we're still trying to make sense of the process. We've been doing some trainings with the people at Naviance, but it's just a different system and interface than what we're used to in Power School with entering things. So uh, we're hoping to really take, uh, take advantage of it with our current eighth and ninth graders. 
Um, the next set of slides, like I said, is more just about what to be thinking about while still in high school. Um, this is what the login had looked like. So students have a username and password, and we had a lot of issues with students getting locked out. And so please encourage kids, um, if they haven't logged in, you can certainly ask them, just say it should be their, they've been told what their login is. It's the last name, underscore, first name, their uh, student ID, uh, initials and uh, dash the 2026. So I know I sent this all to the teachers and I posted it on my Schoology, the class of Schoology page two. So students should be able to find that to be able to, um, to log in. And so there we go. And then once students log in, this is kind of an older version of the page, but they're up on the top is where they will be able to under the um, courses, it's called course, uh, student course planner. And so that's where they get to the screens that I showed you earlier to be able to do that. And this is my sample student, Lewis Park. <laughs> Um, one of the things that, you know, is on families' minds when they're, you know, just have that ninth grader, again, if, if this is your first student, kind of college admission, and what is that all about? And it's really hard because, quite honestly, in the last couple of years, the college admissions landscape has really changed because we went through COVID, we had years where kids were like taking a year off and and not going to college because why in the world would you go to college and be held up in your dorm doing an online class, you know, and or, or doing classes virtually and you could live at home and do that. And so colleges have seen kind of just a difference in how they're responding to it. Um, many, many schools have gone test optional. So when you talk about ACT and SAT and, you know, all these standardized tests that kids used to, you know, be doing all this prep there, there hasn't been as much focus, um, but there, colleges still have to look at something, right? So they're always going to look at the academic record. So kind of overall GPA, kind of the strength of the high school courses. Um, I know um, you've probably, if you've heard me talk before, but one of the things we talk about for choosing AP, IB courses is kind of that tipping point. Like when does it make sense to, to take those courses? And if you're, if you're going to be a C plus or better, it, it maybe is something you want to try because it looks good on your transcript to have kind of honors AP or IB. But if you're going to get below that, it does impact your GPA. And so it's kind of that balance you have to look at. And so, you know, they're looking at academic record, test scores, um, letters of recommendation, you know, encouraging your students to make strong connections with teachers if they if they really get to know a teacher that's someone that um, they have and can write them essays as they go through um, if they have any experiences or things that are going on right now that have been hardships for them like those are things that students write college essays on so um, you know Definitely being, if you're interested in a course or in a college, making um, trips to their, you know, doing actual college visits. And you can start those now or in the summer. Um, I actually, my two older ones, we did a number of college visits just because of some sports things going on. And so it was really fun to be able to see a variety of different campuses as we did that. And so, you know, getting to getting them on a college campus, if that's their goal, or looking at two-year colleges, um, trade schools, some of the different things we have right here in the Twin Cities, Dunwoody does tours. So lots of great programs right in our backyard, just to go see, to get them to start thinking about it is something I would really recommend. Um, so lots of things there to consider. Um, Standardized tests. So the PSAT is something typically students take. It's a, a practice SAT test. And then there's the ACT and SAT. Um, on the college and career website, there's something called MNCIS, Minnesota Career Information Systems. Um, this is a program that um, we have access to through some Perkins funds. Um, and there's test prep on there. Um, kids can do full length practice ACT tests and work on different sections of it. Um, so the PSAT test is one that's typically taken in October of the 10th or 11th grade year. Um, again, in 11th grade is when it counts for National Merit Scholarship Competition, but that's only the top 1% of kids across the country that get honored in that way. And there's three different tests. Um, 10th graders typically take it if they're in the top of their class, um, maybe the top quarter, just 
just as a practice maybe for 11th grade, um, but you don't have to do that. And then the ACT is typically you, this is a tough one because it used to be that kids waited till June to take it. Now people are taking it in February or April. Um, and we offer a test um, this year, it's in March. And I'm not sure what the date will be when your students get to that point their junior year, but uh, the states uh, in Minnesota, we offer a well, one-time uh, free test for all students in grade 11. Um, that's coming up on March 8th. And so I believe what will happen is the rest of the students will have an e-learning day and we just have a testing environment for just juniors at the high school. Um, kids register online. That's all the information is on act.org. Um, SAT test again, same spring of 11th grade typically, but I, I would really get familiar with if your student is going to a four year college again, one, the college might be test optional. Um, a lot of times scholarship money is tied to a test though, so that might be something to consider in taking these tests. There are only um, a handful of schools across the country that don't uh, accept an ACT, which is what more of our students take. But there are kids that still take the SAT. You go through the College Board, um, which is the same company that oversees AP tests. So um, you do all the registration on there and can find out more about it. And then um, I had mentioned Kara Mueller is our College and Career Coordinator. Um, there is a Pathways Advisory Board if you're interested in that. Um, it's great. I've been on it for several years where it's our business professionals in St. Louis Park and surrounding communities that come and um, are an active part of what happens. And that's really where our CNA course came from. Um, we get a lot of guest speakers and have awesome tours in our business um, you know, classes that we have. So if that's something that is interesting to you, um, contact Kara Mueller um, and it would be mueller.kara at slpschools.org if you wanna shoot her a note at all. Um, and I'm just gonna peek one more time to see what else. Have you completely tested beta? <laughs> I am not exactly sure. Someone's asking about testing Naviance for course enrollment. I'm pretty sure that the folks at Naviance have done that. Um, uh, Power School actually bought, I think it's Pearson. I'm not even sure the company name, but they have bought it and um, people are able, or they've been using it to be able in this course planner to download courses. So pretty hopeful that they have tested that. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, are there any other questions that people have? If you want to pop them in the chat, I'm, you know, fine if you unmute and if you want to do that too and, and you know, ask a question, but um, any questions, and I'm going to go back to the actual course registration sheet. Anything that people are wondering about that I haven't clarified or answered? Um, and again, our apologies for the short turnaround time. It's just, it's been really challenging in our office with some staffing things and just with the schedule with snow days this week and a short week, the week after, and us having to fit in so many classroom visits, um, between just two of us, we had to really kind of shift and condense kids. But when I talk to the, the freshmen in classes, I'll assure them that, yes, I want you to go in and do this. If you need to make some changes, um, you can certainly do that as well. Um, and we'll let the English teachers know like when it's going to be shut down that they have to have things in and and when our kind of walk in kind of question days are and kids will be able to access us that way too for questions if they have them. <laughs> well, our, our backup plan is if we don't get it working, we're going to have kids register right in power school. Someone asked what the backup plan if Naviance crashes and it's really power school screens, we still are going to create. So we know that that works. We've used that for several years. Well, since I've, you know, over 20 years is what we've used power school. And so being able to have kids uh, input in that initial screen that I showed. And so we'll be um, prepared with all those screens. So uh, kids can go in there and, and input their choices as well. Great. Well, if there's not any other questions, um, we can end here, but I really appreciate everyone um, hopping on with us tonight and being able to, um, you know, help support your ninth grader um, in making good choices for uh, next year. Thanks so much. Have a good night, everybody.